Uh, on behalf of Walker Consultants, uh, we're really glad you tuned in on this beautiful, albeit very warm spring day to uh, listen and perhaps learn a little bit about what happens to uh, precast parking structures if they aren't maintained properly. Our presentation is planned to be about 20 or 25 minutes in length. So my name is Dan Johns. I've been with Walker for 35 years now and I'm Director of Design for the Michigan and Pittsburgh offices. Uh, also presenting today is uh, Jared Wright, who is a professional engineer and infrastructure material expert and leads the efforts in our Pittsburgh office. Matt Hunt is a principal and 20 year veteran in our Ann Arbor office. He's the director of our forensic restoration and building envelope group. These two guys really are the experts in their field and they're gonna be providing some great information on this topic. So without further ado, let's get the ball rolling. Great, thank you, Dan. Um, for the rest of the presentation, we're gonna shut our uh, videos down uh, so that we don't act as a distraction uh, for the information that we're providing. Um, so what we like to do is we like to begin these presentations with um, a key takeaway slide. And really what that does is that orients everybody in the correct direction as to what to expect from this presentation. And really this is a public service announcement. Essentially what we're seeing is the first and second generation built circa 1960s to 1980s precast pre-stressed double T-stem parking structures are nearing the end of their service lifetime and are requiring major rehabilitation. The good news is, is that repair options are available in order to prolong the service lifetime, but they are expensive and invasive. And uh, Matt's gonna get into that later in the presentation. Um, overall, early intervention and lifetime maintenance plans will prolong the service lifetime of structures and reduce single year expenditures in order to make sure the current generation of new precast, pre-stressed double T-stem parking structures that are built do not suffer the same fate as the um, prior generations. Really, this can all be boiled down into these two figures here. Your figure on your left is your standard deterioration curve, which shows the degradation to, to a concrete parking structure that can occur. And Matt's gonna talk about that as well. It really shows what the, um, what the cost is to not have a 40-year maintenance plan. And essentially, $1 spent over a 40-year maintenance plan will save approximately $1 in future work not performed. So what is a new precast pre-stressed parking structure? So a lot of folks like to use the analogy that these systems are put together like Legos. And I think that's an apt analogy. Essentially all the structural elements, including the columns, the beams and the double T members themselves are produced offsite, shipped to the project location and then craned into, and then craned into place. Now today we're gonna to focus on the double T themselves, which are typically about 12 feet in width and 60 feet in length. And the structural elements include the flanges and the stems. Now the flanges are there to provide a, um, a surface, a wearing surface for vehicles and pedestrians to, tra tra to traverse over. And they're also a structural element in order to resolve those forces back to the T-stem members themselves. And then the T-stems are the main structural elements that transfer the load to the beams. And the most important part of these stems are the embedded pre-stressed tendons. And these tendons are typically draped or harped in the fashion that you see here illustrated by the red line in order to provide that structural capacity. Now, what I like about these two images side by side is that if we take this double T-stem and crane it over into the site plan on the right and drop it into place, it would only take up this little blue hatched area. That really shows how small or how big these parking structures are and how small the T-stem is in comparison. This also illustrates how many joints and how many areas of moisture penetration there will be in a parking structure and how important waterproofing actually is. Because each one of these locations where these T to T joints abut against each other, if the waterproofing breaks down and water infiltrates, it could potentially attack the T stem, which is the main structural element. So therefore it's very important for the long-term durability of these systems in order to maintain appropriate waterproofing. So what we like to say about parking structures is that they're like children and that they need constant supervision. However, there's a major caveat in which a parking structure is never gonna grow up to be an independent being. That means that the older parking structure gets, it actually needs more supervision and more maintenance, almost like a perpetual child. And over time, these parking structures like children are gonna show signs of need. And that can manifest itself in a couple of different ways, but usually it begins with the breakdown of waterproofing measures. Once these waterproofing measures break down and water can penetrate into the gaps and into the joints of the precast member, 
corrosion of the embedded reinforcing steel will occur. That water usually has some chloride and some foreign ions in it that's going to cause the embedded reinforcing steel to corrode. Now, steel corrosion is going to cause an expansion of that steel by about eight times, and the stresses that build up within the concrete are going to have to be relieved by cracking. Once the concrete cracks and spalls, it allows water a greater conduit to enter into the system. Cracked concrete allows water to penetrate into the system about 10 times faster than uncracked concrete. And if this is allowed to continue over time, what can happen is it can penetrate into the system and cause a failure of the double of the T-stem member itself. And really the goal of this presentation is to prevent this, is to prevent this from happening. So we're gonna walk through um, both the reasons why and how moisture is gonna penetrate into the system, repairs that can occur once we have a failed T-stem. And, and at the end, we're gonna have some case studies that are gonna show what we can do and what the costs are to be able to uh, maintain your structure to prevent this in the future. So really this all boils down to water penetrating into your system. These two images here, we're standing inside the parking structure, looking up at the T-stems and taking a picture. On your figure on your left, you have a typical joint between two adjacent T-stems in which the waterproofing measures have failed. Therefore, any water that's traversing over top of this joint can easily follow the gravitation forces down through the, through the joint onto the T-stem itself. And since, and since uh, Water can penetrate through concrete, it can find the weak point and then penetrate and cause corrosion of the embedded pre-stressing steel. This can also occur at the end of the T-stem in which water can come through, infiltrate through the concrete, in, through the joint itself, and then cause freeze-thaw deterioration along the T-stem and cause cracking based upon the corrosion of the embedded reinforcing steel. Now these two scenarios right here, if caught in this circumstance or in this condition, there are relatively less invasive and less expensive repairs that can occur in order to maintain the service lifetime. However, if repairs aren't implemented, then we can easily get into a situation in which we have failure of the entire T-stem itself. And so that failure can occur both at the mid-span of the T-stem, as shown on your image on your left, or it could occur at the end of the T-stem in which we have complete failure. And depending upon the situation that's observed in the field, will dictate the type of repair that's gonna be needed. So now I'm going to pass it on to Matt, which is going to talk about repair, me repair methods for uh, failed T-stems, but he's going to start with the de deterioration curve. Thanks, Jared. So the graph that's shown on the screen right now is a representation, a general representation of how parking structures typically deteriorate over time. So the horizontal axis is time, the years in service of the parking structure and the vertical axis is deterioration, the growth of deterioration. So the two lines that are shown on the graph, uh, the red line uh, shows a scenario where you essentially perform no preventative maintenance. So no repair and maintenance work is done. And as time progresses, the deterioration, uh, it expands exponentially. So a lot of deterioration as the parking structure ages. The green line is our ideal. Uh, that's if you're performing regular repair and maintenance on an ongoing basis. So really the two boundaries uh, in between which most parking structures live. So, and uh, the severe T-stem deterioration that Jared introduced in the earlier slides, typically that does occur in the later years of the life of a parking structure uh, when it's in the situation of being closer to the red line with a, a lack of repair and maintenance. So again, this just frames the overall behavior of the parking structures uh, over time. The uh, first type of repair that we see, if you can uh, advance the slide. Is stem end deterioration. So this condition happens at the end of the T-stem where the T-stem is supported by a load bearing beam. And typically, if we have uh, water leaking that's occurred at the end of the stem, uh, you'll get deterioration of the T-stem at the very end. So this repair uh, adds some conventional reinforcing steel around the end of the existing T-stem, and then a concrete encasement is poured around that reinforcing. So this, uh, this adds to the bearing capacity and renews the lost bearing capacity of the T-stem uh, onto the beam. So a repair like this, uh, ballpark $5,000 in cost, give or take, uh, is what this type of repair uh, will cost. So it's not a massive cost, 
but it's not uncommon uh, uh, to need you know, uh, dozens of these throughout an older precast deck uh, that hasn't received a lot of repair and maintenance. So the next uh, example of a repair, uh, this is a condition where you have deterioration near the mid-span of the T-stem. So the load carrying capacity of the whole span of the stem is being affected. So a ballpark 60 foot span from one end to the other of the T-stem uh, is affected. And you've lost load carrying capacity because corrosion uh, has deteriorated the pre-stressing strands that run through the stem. So in this situation, we would typically see a significant loss of load carrying capacity, uh, but overall the T-stem is still intact. Uh, it has not broken significantly at this point. And what we do is add concrete encasements to either side of the T-stem. There's high strength threaded bars uh, that are added uh, to each side of the T-stem. And these are post-tension. So forces are applied uh, to that threaded bar. And that essentially recreates uh, the original pre-stressed behavior of the original T-stem. So a repair like this uh, to fix the whole span of the existing T-stem, ballpark $35,000 in repair cost. And uh, this would involve typically a, a greater disruption to the operations of the facility because this re repair spans all the way across the parking bay. The third type of repair that we'll show you is uh, severe deterioration. So this would be an instance where the T-stem uh, has essentially failed. Uh, where all of the pre-stressing strands are broken and perhaps even the T-stem has cracked and, and failed and deflected. Uh, so in that case, we, we have nothing left to work with. And uh, one approach to address this is to fully replace the existing T-stem, uh, in this case with a steel beam uh, that's installed and then built composite uh, with a new section of floor slab that's also installed. So the cost for this repair is on the order of fifty dollars to $60,000. So you can see these repair costs are going up uh, as the deterioration is more severe. Uh, the cost to repair that deterioration increases as well. So these are three examples uh, of the more intensive types of T-stem repairs that are often needed in older pre-stressed decks. Uh, Dan Johns is now going to talk about balancing uh, repair and operational demands of a parking facility. Yeah, thanks, Matt. <clears throat> Switching gears a bit here, you know, own, owners of parking structures are constantly juggling quite a few balls when deciding, you know, which things are most important. And we recognize you have these competing items going on all the time. Some of these uh, are re the responsibilities that automatically come with owning a parking structure. Each of these items are really important, some more so than others. You know, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but wanted to highlight that litigation has been on the rise in parking garages. Trip and fall injury cases are the most prevalent and can cost owners a lot of money. Most of them can be prevented if things like proper design, regular maintenance, and good lighting are provided. Some of the demands that are placed on owners also play a big role in keeping their garages clean and safe or whoever uses the facility, you know, whether it's a public garage or a private garage. You know, as you know, these demands can be very political with a lot of public scrutiny. For example, how much do you charge for parking? Do you offer validations? Do you provide valet parking? Do you allow monthly parking mixed with public daily parking? You know, these demands come from many different groups and can be very, very challenging. And then, of course, there's the many factors that play a role in decision making, managing and maintaining a garage. Owning and maintaining a garage in the Midwest Rust Belt region is much different than the southern and desert climates for obvious reasons. The biggest factor is usually money, and that's no surprise there. Owners that plan for repairs and maintenance realize that, much like your car, if it is regularly maintained, it will prolong the life of the facility and minimizes expected major repairs. So speaking of these unexpected repairs, Jared? Hey, 
you, Dan. Um, and to touch on the uh, maintenance responsibility when it comes to parking structures, the rest of the presentation, we're gonna focus on two different case studies. The first case study is gonna look at an existing parking structure that did not have a maintenance plan over its 40 years. And we're gonna show the associated degradation and costs um, with not having a maintenance plan. And then we're gonna do um, in the second case study, we're gonna do a cost comparison um, for a structure that would be that would have a 40 year uh, maintenance plan implemented at the very beginning. So to start with the uh, case study number one, which has no maintenance plan, this is an existing seven level three bay parking structure. And your uh, parking structure on your top left here is the parking structure in question, uh, the three bay uh, seven level parking structure. It's about 68,000 square feet of parking area per level. Again, six supported levels, approximately 40 years old. 1,350 parking spaces. This is a Midwest garage with severe degradation and had minimum prior repair, maintenance, and restoration. And in one single year, a repair and maintenance project cost seven and a half million dollars. And this was 30 plus T-stem replacements with steel beams, five plus T-stem replacements with external double thread bar, about 80,000 square feet of concrete slab and flange repairs, and these costs did not include any potential prior repair projects that were performed or lost parking revenues for closures. Also, we were unable to encapsulate all the outstanding repairs that were necessary because of the extreme and consistent degradation that was going on in the system. Therefore, it's important um, that instead of spending seven and a half million dollars in one single repair project, project, there's a need to establish a maintenance plan and spend less money over 40 years in order to keep the structure in good condition. So when we talk about maintenance plan, therefore we have to establish one. And there's typically three uh, maintenance plan categories. The first begins with routine maintenance. This is an operational expense, which typically includes cleaning of the parking structure regularly in order to move any de debris that builds up over time. The second is periodic maintenance. This is an operational and or a capital expense. And this includes really waterproofing. This is recoding of any existing traffic membrane replacing of expansion joints and sealing of cracks, as well as minor concrete patching that's gonna be needed. And then third and finally, it's replacement repair. And this is a capital expense. This is major rehab restoration to structural capacity, repair of design flaws and deficiencies, as well as repair of uh, corrosion deterioration and repair of material defects. Really the focus and what we wanna do is focus on number one and number two and really avoid repair category number three. And if we do a good job with category number one, number two, and we never have to enter replacement and re the replacement and repair category. So therefore, what goes into an effective waterproofing protection plan? It begins with sealers. These are otherwise known as uh, water repellents, and they are um, silane or siloxane in base, and they're based and they're applied to. They penetrate into the concrete and react with the surface hydroxyl groups that are within the pore structure of the concrete in order to render it hydrophobic and repel the water. Um, these need to be reapplied approximately every three to five years. They are relatively inexpensive, about 30 to 50 cents per square foot. However, they do not bridge cracks. So if there are, there are any cracks um, that are present, there needs to be a more robust waterproofing measure that, that occurs. And that robust waterproofing measure, one of them is the application of sealant. And what's nice about sealant is that they are applied as a fluid and then they harden into a flexible seal and they prevent water from getting into the joints. And this, um, this occurs both on the image on your left, which is along the wash of your precast um, double T at the end in order to prevent the water from penetrating into this area, as well as along the middle of your double T um, in order to prevent water from penetrating into the adjacent uh, T stems. These can come in a variety of different uh, fashions. They can be urethane or silicone based. And they can come in different colors based upon um, the, the scheme of the parking structure. But finally, really the, the most effective way of keeping water out uh, are traffic coating membranes or traffic toppings. And these are an excellent waterproofing uh, system. They come in typically about four grades, depending upon where they're gonna be applied. If it's a parking bay, driving aisle, turning bays, or areas exposed to sunlight. Now their service life is longer than sealers, about 10 to 15 years. And they do bridge cracks, unlike sealers. They can be used over occupied space and they're relatively inexpensive, at about three and a half dollars to five dollars a square foot. Now on your images to the left, you can see the traffic code is, is installed in two different fashions. On your bottom picture, you can see that the traffic coding is installed across the entire um, precast um, level. 
However, what we find the most economical and the most efficient way of installing the traffic coating is installing them along uh, strips, essentially at all the joints, because really the important thing when it comes to these systems is keeping water out of the joints. Um, if we keep water out of the, out of the joints and out of the gaps, then water can never affect the T-stem itself. One of the things to remember, though, with these systems is that they do move, you know, precast systems move quite a bit. So um, there needs to be constant maintenance <clears throat> to these systems in order to ensure that it remains watertight. And so that drives us right into case study two, which is a, a 40 year maintenance plan cost comparison. And this is for a new seven level three bay parking structure. Again, uh, having a very similar parking structure to what we talked about previously for the existing structure. Say about 1300 parking spaces, about 70,000 square feet of parking area per level at six supported levels. Again, this is a brand new structure in the same type and size as the existing structure. We're gonna begin with about five to 10 years into the parking structure service lifetime. We're gonna recommend applying traffic coating strips. Uh, one foot along the joints of the top supported level. Now, the reason why we choose the top supported level is because that's exposed to the ambient conditions for the most amount of time or for um, the most amount of its life. Therefore, it's going to get a lot of wind, rain, and snow. Um, and therefore, it's also going to get plowing activities and salting activities. And it's important to keep that out of the, um, out of the rest of the parking structure. So maintaining these joints are going to be very important. And we also choose the bottom two supported levels um, because we're concerned about water coming in from the street and coming in from the roadway. Um, water filled with whatever sort of foreign ions were used to de-ice these roadways. What happens is that the vehicle is gonna enter into the parking structure and then deposit all those foreign ions into, onto the first two supported levels and cause degradation of those levels um, that would be atypical um, for a parking structure. And so that's gonna cost about $5 a square foot which would be about $100,000. Then every five years after the first application, we wanna come through and apply traffic coating recoat and perform isolated repairs as needed. Right now, recoat is typically gonna be about $3 a square foot for traffic coating that's already installed. And therefore, we're also gonna to wanna to budget approximately $275,000 worth of miscellaneous concrete and drainage repairs. Now, the concrete repair can be anywhere for to some flange repairs that need to be that need to occur, as well as some um, external spandrel beam repairs that may be necessary. And then our drainage repairs could be for um, to replace drains, to replace um, um, some piping, as well as expansion joint work. So if we sum that together, that's about $345,000 every five years. And if we add that across in a 40 year service lifetime of a parking structure, it's gonna be about two and a half million dollars spread over 40 years approximately $48 per space per year instead of seven and a half million dollars in one construction season. And this can really be demonstrated in this figure right here and shown for clarity on the, this is a uh, maintenance plan cost comparison. And so on the X axis is the, are the years after original construction and on the Y axis is cost in 2021 dollars. We have the blue line, which is our 40 year maintenance plan cost. And then our orange line, which is uh, for no maintenance plan. And we can see here for the 40 year maintenance plan, it requires some investment into the parking structure year over year. But really what this shows is it prevents a $5 million gap at the end. And really this shows the cost of not performing, not having a maintenance plan for this parking structure is approximately $5 million. So for every $1 spent over a 40 year maintenance plan, we'll save approximately $2 in future work not performed. So we're gonna end with this key takeaway slide. This is the same, same slide that we showed at the beginning. And so really a public service announcement saying that the first and second generation built 1960s to 1980s, precast pre-stressed parking, uh, double T-stem parking structures are nearing the end of their service life and require major rehab. Good news is, is that there are repair options available to prolong the service lifetime, but they are invasive and expensive. And we talked about them during this presentation. Early in maintenance plans, what is going to prolong the service lifetime of structures and reduce single year expenditures in order to prevent the current generation of parking structures being built from having the same fate as prior generations. And that can all be demonstrated in our deterioration curve on the top left and our maintenance plan comparison on the top right, which shows the gap between having no maintenance plan and a preventive maintenance plan in both degradation and dollars. And that for every $1 spent, over a 40 year maintenance plan will save approximately $2 in future work not performed. 
And with that, just want to say it's important to make sure that we implement the right asset plan for our parking structures. Um, my name is Jared Wright. Um, Dan Johns and Matt Hunt are here as well. Um, you can contact us at, at any time, but right now we're going to throw our cameras back on and open up for questions. So I'll turn